you done now? Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world. And around the world. TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality, Brad Gilmore, brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great <laughs> introduction. Television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much, Brad, for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripa. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The legendary frontman of ACDC, Brian Johnson, joins us right now. Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Brad. What looking at you give me funny lad. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is, is the, the collection. collection. Now your host, host, the, the boat, boat, Brad, Brad Gilmore. Gilmore. What is going on, everybody? Thank you, Keith, for that lovely introduction. 2023 is here. I can't believe it's a new year already. 2022 went by so fast. Why did my voice just rise up like that when I said that? I'm not really sure. I'm not sure of a lot of things, but one thing I am sure about is I'm excited that you've joined us for another year of great interviews here on The Collection um, this one in particular is something that I'm very excited about. If you haven't, though, already, before we move on, make sure you follow me on all the social sites. That's at Brad Gilmore on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, TikTok. You can find me at Boat Gilmore. I can't believe somebody had Brad Gilmore already on TikTok. Or can I believe it? It's like the biggest app in the world, and I'm just getting around to being on it. Anyway, you can go check out some of my stuff over there on TikTok. And uh, in all the other places, make sure you subscribe to this podcast. Leave us a five-star rating in whatever podcast service that you use to find your shows. Uh, if you're a fan of podcasts, which apparently you might be, you should probably go check out Back to the Future of the Podcast. We're getting ready for season 10. Uh, Clue the Movie Podcast, where we break down Clue the Movie one minute at a time. If you're a pro wrestling fan, the Hall of Fame with Booker T and myself. Those are all shows that I'm doing pretty much every single week. A Hall of Fame four times a week, most times. And uh, yeah, you can go check those out. So I would really appreciate it. Anyway, today's interview is with Danya Ramirez. Danya Ramirez is a name that if you don't know off the top, you have seen her in one of your favorite things, whether that be from big major motion pictures, if people still say that in 2023, she'd been in a lot of movies, right? Going back to Brett Ratner's X-Men movie, she was in The Last Stand, of course, X-Men 3 of that initial Brian Singer trilogy. She was in that third uh, edition of the movie. I know that not everyone loves that movie. I'm a little bit more on the like side than I am the hate side, but nevertheless, she was in that. I first, though, really saw her, even though I saw that movie a long time ago when it came out, I first saw her in Entourage, where she came around season seven, I think was her season, Ironically, her co-star in the new show we're about to talk about, Scott Kahn, was also in season seven and eight of Entourage. She was Turtles' love interest, Jerry Ferrara. She played Alex, who brought him the Avion tequila idea, and then she blew up as like kind of the hot model, who was the tequila model brand. And she drove uh, cars for him or something at some point. I don't remember. Love Entourage. Saw her in that. Then she was most recently in Jumanji, The Next Level, where she played the lady in red. And now Danya Ramirez is starring in a new Fox procedural called Alert. This show is created by Jamie Foxx based off something that really happened to him in real life, having to do with like a child abduction. She gets into that in the interview. This show is like your Criminal Minds or your CSI or your Law and Order. It's definitely a procedural show, but it is so action-packed, it's crazy. I've already seen the first couple of episodes of the show, and I am not exaggerating when I say, like, your heart is pounding through the onset of it. And um, if you love Scott Kahn, and I think that he is so funny in everything that he's been in, Entourage included, or the Oceans series, or my personal favorite, Ready to Rumble. <laughs> but if you love Scott Kahn in any of those movies, you will, uh, you will enjoy this show. 
because this show is definitely, it has a few, uh, few of these, few great Scott. But the show is fantastic. I can't wait for all of you to see Alert on Fox. It debuts January 8th and 9th. Make sure you set your DVRs. Watch the show. Support it because you're really going to like it. I'm, I'm not BSing you. We, I got to talk to Danya. She was in her trailer while shooting on set. Uh, and it, it was a bit of a hectic day because her and I had missed each other a couple of times based on schedules. And then it was like, hey, I don't think we can do it. I think we can do it. I had to go cover the Rockets game. There's a lot of stuff going on this day. But I was so thankful to be able to talk to her about this show, about her career, about her success. Very smart, smart woman and a hardworking, uh, hard, hardworking woman. Anybody would love to uh, be able to spend time with her. And I was so thankful to be able to spend just a little bit of time with Danya Ramirez. So here is my interview with her right now. We're talking about Alert. Here's the incomparable Danya Ramirez on The Collection. And she joins us right now. We're talking about Alert that's premiering on Fox January the 8th and 9th. It's a brand new show that I promise is super intense from the get-go and definitely catches your attention. One of the stars joins us right now, Danya Ramirez. Danya, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Well, hey, yeah. you're you're on set. You're on set now, right? We're working now. I am I am on set right now, freezing in Montreal, making it all happen, finding the the missing people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, give give the people, I guess, a little bit of a uh, just a quick background on the show itself. This show created by Jamie Foxx. It's it's a procedural drama. It follows a missing persons investigation unit, right? Yeah, it follows. Well, I, I play uh, Nikki Batista, who's the, the the captain, the head of the missing persons unit, and she has taken this role on after. Uh, she finds out that her son has gone missing. And so um, my hus ex-husband, when you meet, first meet me on the show, is uh, played by Scott Kahn. Um, so we basically partner up together in the quest of finding our son, but also to to bring light into these people's lives that are, are missing their loved ones. So it's about reuniting people. It's there's a lot of suspense. There's a lot of action uh, because we know each other for so long. There's a lot of comfortability and, and 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 we can find the lightness within all the drama, which I really enjoy. And it's a it's a character driven procedural, I think, is the best way to put it. Yeah, um, you can tell the connection, the chemistry that you and Scott have, like from the first scene that y'all kind of shared together. There's I don't want to give too much away, but y'all kind of have a um, an exchange at a I guess in your kitchen. Uh, over you know signing of some paperwork or things of that nature, but you can just tell there's a instant chemistry. Of course, y'all y'all work together on Entourage, or did y'all have scenes together on Entourage? I knew y'all were in the same season. Yeah, we were in the on the same season. We did not have any scenes together um, on Entourage, so this has been such a journey that I feel like it's a long time coming. You know, we know a lot of the same people so we've been we've been friendly with each other uh obviously we worked together we worked on the same show i remember even like taking it back to the entourage times we all went the entire cast uh doug ellen took us to to watch a fight over in vegas so we had like we've had a lot of play time together but we haven't had the opportunity to actually bring it uh, onto the screen and i think because of that there's a lot of uh camaraderie that happens between us um and as you continue to watch the show you'll see that sort of like that um, the comfortability between him and I just gets better and better, and, and you get more invested uh, on that with them as as people, which I really enjoy. Yeah, the the show again is called Alert. It's going to be on Fox. It premieres on January the eighth and the ninth. We're talking to one of the stars, Donya Ramirez. Um, when you read a script like this and you know, okay, if this show goes right, and well, I'm gonna I, there's a potential I'm playing this because these kind of shows, the Law and Orders or anything like that, they can go for twenty years. Right. I mean, they can go for a very long time, multiple seasons. And we've stuck even with Criminal Minds and someone like a Joe Montagna. We've been stuck with him, uh, not stuck with him, but we've gotten <laughs> to see him as a character, right, grow over several seasons. So when you get a script like this, you see there's a potential for that. Um, what do you look for, like, in the character? Do you think, is there enough on meat on the bone to carry oh. this multiple seasons? Yeah, I, I think I think what's important is that, you know, what they do for a living is just what they do for a living. It's really you're invested in them as people. And it's about humanizing these characters and like so that you're invested in 
what drives them to have that job you know so for us i mean the, from the very from the get go you start with this real life you know journey that they're both experiencing these two characters that have lost their son so once you go through something like that or even if you missed your like you've gone to a mall and lost your kid for like five seconds you know how traumatizing that can be right you know so i think playing on this real life you know pain or trauma and sort of like adding that layer into what we do every single every case that we take on and making every case personal is for me what what made this particular show stand out um and so that people don't feel like you're stuck with us you're sort of taking a ride with us right we're taking you on this journey that uh, along with us so every every episode is about a different case we're solving a different case but it's like it's like it's almost like we are uh figuring ourselves out through that so like as you know ex uh, husband and wife how do we manage this new partnership now working together how do we deal with you know being able to bring uh, light and and to bring these loved ones together and have that be a positive thing in our lives and i think we both both our characters are interesting because we deal with it very we come from very different perspectives from my side you know as nikki i i really try to see the positive out of it and say okay so let me what how can i serve like how can i help other people because i emphasize i emphasize uh, emphas- what is that how do you say that I emphasize, yeah. No, and not emphasize. I empathize with empathize. Them. Yes, okay. Go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Empathize. That's the Dominican in me. You know, I gotta get. It. I'm like, how's what's the English word? <laughs> I empathize with with uh, with the the people that I'm helping, and I have compassion, you know, towards them. And for me, it's about wanting to, you know feel like that hole within me is being filled by helping other people. Um, for Jason, it could be a completely different journey. And I'll let Scott, if you ever talk to him, discuss that. But we feel like we're there for one another. And uh, I feel like also we haven't seen being able to have the opportunity to watch too many couples that go through divorce Um still be there and have so much compassion and love for one another and we meet each other with love through our through our struggles there's nobody that we can relate to better um because we've gone through all this pain and, and all this trauma together and we've seen the light we, we we for us now we can see light at the end of the tunnel i think i'll leave that up to you guys to continue to watch Okay, I like it. Again, Alert is going to debut in the first week of January, January 8th and 9th on Fox. So when I saw, when I was watching the first episode, you know, what stuck out to me before I get even into the story and anything um, was created by Jamie Foxx. And it definitely stuck out to me because when you talk about Entourage, you say Doug Ellen, who's the creator of Entourage, the head writer um, of the show, he was on set, I know, a lot, or at least very involved in the story. What has been Jamie Foxx's involvement? Was it more of like, hey, I had this idea, we fleshed it out, now it's up to y'all to create, and he leaves that on you, or is he creatively involved on a day-to-day? Well, I believe anybody that like creates something that's a producer behind something, and someone like Jamie Foxx is a creative entity, so I do believe that he's behind the, you know, I, I, from my understanding, this is something that's been a long time coming, uh, that him and he his partners have been putting together for a while. And, you know, in speaking with John Eisendrath, who's the creator and the main writer on, of the show, um, I found out that this was something, an idea that Jamie gravitated towards because it's something that he experienced with his own, one of his own kids at one point where it was like, I don't know the exact story, but I, I believe that, it's some, that it was something personal to him. And he said, oh, that'd be interesting. Like, why don't we see a procedural or a drama about these people that are that go missing an amber alert and so it's almost like putting a face to the amber alert was uh, his intention from the very beginning and when you have someone like Jamie who's so passionate uh, creatively about what he does I think it makes everyone passionate right uh, and, I, and and I believe that that's been the the idea and the and the tone of of everyone on set like every actor that's come in is really passionate about what it is that they want to tell and it's not just scott and i going through our own personal uh, drama 
within the show. I think the show itself lends itself for uh, for for everyone to have this friendship, this family within the MPU, like our partners or the people that were our team that we're working with. We all have this little family. Um, outside of what we do for a living. And everybody has their own um, journey that they're going through and we're there for one another. And I think that's what makes it really special. I think any show that really dives into a universal theme like love or pain, um, it's a, it's a show that uh, that's going to be worth watching. So I'm excited for to share it with everyone. Yeah. Everyone's going to, I guarantee love the show. The show is hooks you from the beginning I couldn't stop watching it. Um, By the way, and it's here. a lot of action. There's a it's lot of a action, lot of action. Too, which is exciting because a lot of times it's not just like we're in the MPU, like solving cases and investigating. We're really out there. I mean, there's something really fearless um, about the way that both Nikki and Jason deal with the cases. And, you know, they stop at nothing. They feel like they've lost everything anyway. And they're out there against these guys and they're going to they're going to, you know, pull out all the stops. So like when you get to do that action, was that another kind of attraction about the show? Like I'm about to get physical because you're oh, yeah. you're you're an athlete, right? You have an athletic background, yeah. uh, volleyball yeah. and all kinds of things. So I'm sure that kind of engaged that side of your brain. I have to tell you, I was very excited to, that I was getting interviewed by you know <laughs> you with ESPN Radio because I you know I love I love sports. I come like you said from my background is like I played volleyball in college for four years, um, and I've always there's a part of me that's full of adrenaline. So I was excited to. When I read it, I was like, okay, I don't know about, you know, going in and just solving a case. That's not my style. If we, you know, add a layer to it that feels like exciting and that I'm actually doing something, that's something that speaks to me. So I was excited about that. And, you know, also being able to bring a little humor to some of these, you know, dramatic moments. I mean, do you, for me, when I look at, um, you know, the great actors and actresses of, of all time, you can see... They love the drama because that's really where, you know, storytelling lives in, in drama. But the comedy is so fun to play. Right. I mean, to, to yeah. be able to hit the jokes and get the laughs. And I think it's so hard to do in a procedural, especially like this, like to play the comedy right. Because you are right. It's such an intense show. And there's these big action moments and there's missing children and things of that nature to find a way to weave comedy in kind of is difficult. And I do feel like that y'all pull it <laughs> off, especially in you and Jason or you and Scott Kahn's relationship. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what that that's makes me really excited to hear that you felt that way when you watched it, because, you know, it, the reality of it is when you know someone for a long time, it doesn't matter how traumatic the situation is that you're dealing with. You're going to find moments that are light and, you know, to feel like you're lighthearted and you get into that comfortable zone with that person and that's what makes it, that's what makes it funny. It's not that there's a joke written, it's about the comfortability that you have and the camaraderie that you have with that other person that you're working with. And I think that's what me and my, me and Scott have as people. And then we get to bring that into the show while we play these two characters. You know, we're very both very witty. We're also very passionate. And I think the combination of those two, you can tell you can see why it was difficult for us to stay together once we lost our kid. <laughs> <laughs> But it's also why you root for us to really be there for one another, because it's like it's it's infectious, you know? Oh, absolutely. Now, I'll, I want to go back to your athletic background for a moment, because you went to college pretty early. Uh, you were according to online. Online can yeah. lead me astray, but you were oh, 16. Yeah. No, yeah. I was 16 years old when I started when I started college. Yeah. So I graduated when I was 20. I got a, a degree in communications and I played volleyball. No, really, I just thought, you know, I, I I wasn't planning anything in my life. You know, mm -hmm. one thing led to I was born in Dominican Republic. You know, I I was I guess I consider myself athletic because I used to climb trees in Dominican Republic. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you guess start somewhere. You know, I, used to, I used to jump from rooftop to rooftop and steal like fruit from my neighbors. So I think that's, that was the extent of my athleticism in Dominican Republic. But then when I came to America and I was going to school, you know, I had someone, I used to go to the park and I shoot like hoop uh, basketball outside. And I was naturally athletic, you know, I had a natural ability and somebody came in and, you know, one of my friends was like, well, you should join the team. And so I started playing volleyball and basketball. And because I started school so young, 
my dad wanted me to be a lawyer. So when I said that I wanted to become an actress, he was just like, what? Like, you, you're going to go to school. And so by the time I got my first job and I was like 15 years old and, you know, I was working, my first job was like a featured extra on a Spike Lee project. And I was like, OK, I'm going to do this for a living. And my dad wasn't really on board. I was like, the only thing I have left to do is I have to play a sport so I can get into a university and get out of my house and then, you know, see where that takes me. And that's that was my drive. And to be honest, I am so grateful because it got me ready for auditioning, you know, the auditioning process. I was able to be like, OK, I can lose and then go back out there and then show my best. And, and that's, I think, part of the reason why I'm still here. Well, I mean, and also I like to think, especially at a young age, athletics can teach you so much, especially when you play teams, right? And it's really analogous to being on a set with other characters because you have to know your role, right? You have to know what your role on the team is, and you have to facilitate that to make sure everybody else can be involved. Listen to the coach and the directions that they give, very similar to a director, I'm sure. Um, did you find that those kind of prepare you for the, the set oh, you life? Know, I Absolutely. It's, it's funny that you say that because I was having an interview the other day and someone, you know, asked me, they were like, oh, how do you feel? And this is the first time that you're really leading a show. And I, and I was like, you know, it's interesting because I didn't I don't look at myself as the, you know, leading this show. I look at it like I couldn't. I, I support really well everybody around me. And I guess that's why you can see it as I'm leading the show. But for me, What's interesting is every single person that come in, every every actor that shows up to play a role. Um, I'm coming. What, last, let me finish answering the question and then I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. My life. <laughs> <laughs> great. It's great. I'm so grateful. Um, so you know, going back to what I was saying, you know, what, what's been really a blessing to me is because I have that background of like being able to play on a team and knowing my role, when I'm here, it's really about the, you know supporting everyone that comes in, even if they come in for one day. Like I want the best out of them, so I'm there to support them, and I see them as the lead. Um, so that's the best way to put it, I guess. You know, when they ask me, "Do you lead the show?" I'm like, I really just do a really. I, I like to support other people. I love that answer. I love that answer. I know that you got to go. You got you're a busy. You're a busy person, but I really appreciate you taking the time. Daya Ramirez, of course, the show's called Alert. Thank you so much, and congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much. And it's on premieres on Sunday, January 8th and 9th, but it'll be on from then on every Monday night. So we'll see you then. Thank see you, you then. Donya Ramirez. Thank you so much. Namaste. Hurry up, tape running out.